another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vincent. I'm an Army veteran. And today I want to talk about the Korean and Vietnam War veterans. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk here on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. And if you're a veteran and love to share your story or resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP. Now that we got that out the way, let's get into our topic talking about Korean and Vietnam War veterans. Now today, what I am going to do is I'm going to screen share and take my Korean and Vietnam War veterans through how to go apply for their benefits because I'm seeing that there's a um situation going on out there to where most Korean and Vietnam War veterans don't know nothing about applying for benefits. I remember, um, long story short, I was in the VA and I, from time to time, I like to talk to veterans and basically, you know, learn a lot from them because I believe that, you know, a lot of the older veterans have paid the way for us younger veterans. So whenever I'm in their presence, I always sit there and I pick their brain. And one of the things that I found out that most people may not know because they don't ask or they assume, like I did, that the Vietnam and Korean War veterans know that they can file for compensation and pension. A lot of them don't know that. A lot of them just go down to the VA. They get their daily health care needs taken care of, and that's it. Just like how it was for a lot of us who got out before a certain time, most people got out back then and they didn't know nothing about the VA. The VA wasn't in their face like how it's beginning to be now for the younger veterans. Um, So there's a lot of Vietnam and Korean War veterans that just really don't know. Like I had a... um neighbor of mine, pastor, good friend, brother I love, when I was in North Charleston, South Carolina, he was a Vietnam veteran and he had cancer. He had different things going on. And I remember I used to take him to these appointments for him, you know, to go down there at times when him and his wife needed to go there for him to have surgery. And one day I happened to ask him, I was like, Hey, Papa, Sam, um, are you being paid? Because I see you always going to the VA and he looked at me. He was like, paid, paid for what? I was like, you don't know that you can file for compensation and um, uh, compensation claim based off of the things that you're being helped with at the VA. He was like, no, son, I ain't know nothing about that. So what I did was I sat down with him and at the time it was e-benefits before they moved everything to VA.gov. I took him to, um, e benefits, which now, as you can see in front of you, is va.gov where they consolidate everything at. And I took them on there, we logged in, and what I found out was back in 1979, if I'm not mistaken, he got denied for PTSD. Well, back then, whenever this would happen for veterans, most of them, because you know, they were, um, they were where they at during their era. They just went back to work. They forgot about it. They lived their lives, worked 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years on the job. And most of them either passed away or most of them, you know, went to the VA, but never knew that they can file for compensation and pension. So this is why I want to take the time out now to show those veterans where they need to go so that they can get the help. Because a lot of them are honestly clueless as to what they need to do, how they need to go about doing it in order for them to get help. Now, one thing I do want to make known is you can go to organizations such as DAV or um, American Legion in different places to where these congressional recognized organizations can help you. They can help you. So you may need to reach out to them. But I just want to get the wheel turned. I just want to get um, the ball rolling. So what I want to do is just show you where you need to go. 
And you can go here on va.gov. And again, as always, I'm going to put this stuff in the description so that you can actually see where you need to go, what you need to do, and how to go about doing it. And this page right here, which I'm showing you, is the VA um, claim examination page. That where, you know, you can go here and you can start, you know, filing and filling out this paperwork or getting registered and signed up to, you know, get the ball rolling in your court. And once you do that, you will help yourself out tremendously by doing so. Um, I'm going to start out with my Korean War veterans, and then I'm going to work my way to the Vietnam veterans. Because again, in this presentation, I'm going to go over information for both groups of veterans so that you will know where to go, what to do, and how to go about doing it. So as you can see right here, this is for the Korean War veterans health issues. And what it says, if you served during the Korean War any time between June 25th, 1950 and July 27th, 1953, you may, you may be at risk for risk of certain health conditions. Learn about these conditions and what to do next to take care of your health. So as you can see, they have a list of a uh, group of those who serve as far as dates during the Korean War. So if you are in this category, then they're talking to you. Now, there may be time periods outside of this, and I haven't heard any new updated information. And to be honest with you, this is where I go to find out all my information because, again, I like to hear things from the horse's mouth. And this is what the VA has put out. So these are the veterans that they're addressing. If you're outside of that window, then I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how to help you because, again, it has to be within this window. So if you do have a fight, then you have to take that fight to Congress and different people. And I'm pretty sure that if you call a veterans patient advocate and you talk to them, I did a video on that before, so all you have to do is Go down and look at the videos I have. I have one for the Patients Advocate, VSOs. You can reach out to those people and somebody can get you some answers. They can help you figure out what direction you need to go into. I try to make sure that I put out all this information and make everything that I put out solely informational versus information for how to apply for a compensation to pension because I realize that even though there are a lot of people applying for compensation and pension as far as trying to figure out, okay, how do I fight for PTSD? How do I fight for these various things? A lot of the big issues it, uh, I, that I witness is there are veterans out there that don't know about the resources and where to go to find these resources. So I just want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of that. And here it is. They act, they have a list right here that says, what health risk should I know about related to my service during the Korean War. So they say that you may be at risk of illnesses or injury caused by extreme cold weather, occupational job hazards, and noises. And up under each of those subtitles, they list those things that um that you may be um having issues with right now. So for extreme cold, they say health problems like skin cancers and frostbite scars and pain, tingling or numbness in the fingers and toes caused by the effects of cold weather. You are at high risk if you serve in chosen reservoir campaign conducted from October through December 1915 in extreme sub-zero temperature. Occupational job related, related hazards are chemicals, paints, radiation, and other hazards you may have come in contact with through your military job. And for noises, they got harmful sounds from guns, explosive rockets, heavy weapons, jets, aircrafts, machineries that could cause or contribute to hearing loss and tinnitus ringing in the ears. So the question most veterans ask is, what should I do? So you take these steps as they show you here on the screen and you talk to your primary care health provider or your local VA environmental health coordinator about other health concerns related to your military service. One of the things that I like to tell veterans, um, and this is for all veterans, 
whenever you fighting for a certain disability, like say for instance, you're trying to receive compensation to claim for it. The biggest thing that I always tell people is you have to go to the VA. And if you haven't been to the VA, you have to see some type of doctor who can document your issues because everything has to be in black and white. So if you have no substantial evidence to support what you're claiming and what you say has happened, then you're going to find yourself fighting without no nothing to back you up. So you have to ensure that you are, you know, actually um, taking the time out to see the doctor. I know most people say, man, I have a hard time. Well, if your situation is that bad, then you should be seeing somebody. You can't be sitting back saying, well, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But when it comes to your health, you don't take the time out to make sure that you do what you need to do. So you need to get down there. You need to fight for um your health and make sure that you're taking care of your health as well as taking care of your pockets by fighting for your compensation and pension and understand that it's going to be a long process because if you waited for a long time it's going to take a long time in some cases you might have been waiting for a long time and it may take little to no time but again you have to start this process you can't assume just because you're going to the va they're going to do this for you. One thing I, I've i learned from the VA from being there all the time is that they're all separate entities within the VA. And if you don't stop and take the time to figure out what's going on around you, you're going to be lost in the sauce. You're not going to know what to do. And you're going to have situations that you're going to find yourself in. And you're not going to know how to get out of it because you haven't taken the time to do your homework. One of the things I remember about being a soldier is we all came and we all are in the military. Most of us all have the same rank. But the thing that separates one person from the next is your willingness and ability to say, you know what, let me step outside of the box and do what others aren't doing. So if we all in the same boat, then I need to be finding out ways to do what everybody else ain't doing, which may require me to sit down, read, and, you know, just find out information on my own. Because a lot of times, remember when we were in the military, people didn't tell you nothing. You know, if you didn't take the time out to read AR 670-1, which is the Army regulation for those who were in the Army, then there was a lot of information that you just didn't know. Like, I recently talked to one of my battle buddies, and I didn't realize that in the regulations, you know, if they were asking you to do certain things that went against your job description as far as um you know certain things man there were regs to help you out as far as them make you do extreme things but because a lot of us were crabs in the bucket we didn't you know go beyond where we were at we didn't go seek and try to find out information didn't talk to jag and different people to get the information and the proper knowledge that we need we struggled and we found ourselves stuck in certain situations where we didn't know you know, one of the things that I always that I found out while being in the army was if you sought self-help, then there was a lot of things that they couldn't do to you because you took the initiative to say, you know what, I got an issue. I got a problem. Let me get the help. And that's the same way it has to be out here as far as for us in the vet, as a veteran. We have to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves. We can't sit back and wait for somebody else to do it. That's just life. That ain't oh, people owe me this and that. No, you owe it to yourself to find out what you need to know. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're going to struggle. Then you're going to find yourself in situations where you're just not getting help. So once you take go to step two, and say find out if you can get disability compensation, monthly payments, and other benefits if you have an illness or injury caused or made worse by your active duty service. You can learn more here. And this is where, you know, you go as far as for the Korean War veterans to find out more information about your situation. Now that we have already talked about everything as far as for the Korean War veteran, now we're going to go to the Vietnam veteran. And again, on that same page that I just um that I just left off, I'm going to show you one more time just so you can see. On the side here, they have side tabs to where you could 
click on World War II, Korean, Vietnam, Cold War, Gulf War, Iraq War, Operation the Door of Freedom, which is during my time. For those who went to Afghanistan, you just click on this or click on these um, sidebars and you could pretty much find out any information that you need to know. So everything that you're searching for really is on VA.gov. You just have to sit down, take the time and read and go through this stuff. And if you need help, man, as I always say, reach out to me. You know, you could hit me up at VetTalkTexas.com and I'll get back with you and we could sit down and go over whatever it is that you need help with. And I'll do my best to help you with whatever resource I have. And if I don't know, then I'm going to point you towards somebody. Because, again, it's how bad do you want it? Not how bad do Brother Vince want it? How bad do the VA want to help you? How bad do you want to help? You got to do something about it. That's the problem that most veterans are faced with is they want help, but at the same time, they ain't doing nothing to get the help. You know, and it's sad that, you know, many of them sit there and they – you know, Twitter laid thumb, but you know, it's something that I remember seeing in the military. There were people like that that really needed help, but instead of them getting help, they sat there, Twitter their thumb, and then when things went bad, they mad at the world. Don't let that be you. So here it is, um, right here. This right here is the D A um V. And again, they're another congressional recognized organization that have been paid to help veterans and here it is. They have a list for those who are considered Vietnam era veterans. So it says that the U.S. began its involvement in the Vietnam War, August 5th, 1964. The era ended May 7th, 1975 by order of the President Gerald Ford. During the, the 11 year campaign, approximately 2.7 million American men and women served. Of those, 58,220 died and 153,000 were wounded. Today, there are fewer than 850,000 living Vietnam veterans, many of whom are eligible for VA benefits. So if you're a Vietnam era veteran, like they got listed here, you serve between August fifth, nineteen sixty four and May seventh, nineteen seventy five, then you should have your butt down there seeing the VA the file for VA benefits, compensation and pension. You should be seeking out this benefit for you. And if you know of a family member that served during the Korean War or the Vietnam War Please, please, please help them do this stuff. I made a lot of things simple by going over it. I may not have shown you in-depth information in this video, but if you go back to all of my other videos, if you're even looking at these videos, you can find out what you need to know. There are so many different people out there that are doing the same thing I'm doing. So there's no reason why a veteran should not know what they need to know. So please make sure that you get this information out there to them. Please make sure that you're doing your due diligence and doing your research and you're looking at this information, you're listening to this information, you're reading this information. You know, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Well, that's concerning the word of God. Well, it has to be the same way with your everyday life as far as a veteran. You got to study. You got to do the work. You got to go down there and seek the help, self-help, help yourself. They said, what benefits are available for Vietnam War veterans? Vietnam War veterans are eligible for benefits that are open to all U.S. military veterans, including and not limited to disability compensation for service-connected disabilities such as post-traumatic um, um, stress disorder, amputation, pension, health care, loans, insurance, Vietnam War veterans may be eligible for disability compensation for exposure to Agent Orange. What is Agent Orange exposure? Agent Orange is a herbicide consisting of a mix of chemicals, defoliants used by the U.S. military in Vietnam and the Korean militarized zone. During Operation Ranch Hand, the U.S. military spread over 
1,900 million gallons of Agent Orange over forests in the Vietnam Laos to lure out Viet Cong troops. The operation lasted from 1962 to 1971, causing the exposure of many U.S. military personnel and Vietnam locals um, to harsh chemicals, including um, dioxin, that later caused many health issues and diseases. The Department of Veteran Affairs presumed Agent R's exposure for any veteran who served either in Vietnam between January 9, 1963 and May 1975 to include brief short visits or service abroad ships, aboard ships operating on Vietnam inland waters in and near the Korean demilitarized zone between April 1st, 1968 and August 31st, 1971. Veterans who serve outside this time period or location may still be eligible for service-connected exposure, including those serving on or near military base in Thailand during the Vietnam era, served at harvest, um, herbicide testing or storage facilities outside of Vietnam, crews, um, I mean, served as crew members aboard C-123 plane flown after the war, were associated with the department I mean, Defense Department project to test, store, and dispose of herbicide in the United States. Over these years, presumed exposure to Agent Orange has expanded to include veterans who serve abroad, certain U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships. Additionally, some children of veterans with Agent Orange exposure were born with birth defects that may also be entitled to VA benefits for their conditions. So I just read a list of things. This is where you need to go. You need to get the help. And I'm going to put this stuff in the description so that you can actually go back over it, read it, because I may read too slow. I may not read good enough for you. That's okay. Just want to make sure that you know where to go to get the information that you need. And on the DAV site, they have the where you can see the list of it's, um, to see the list of ships associated with possible exposures. You can learn more about the birth defect, disability compensation. So many of y'all might have had kids that had conditions from your husband or wife who served during this time. And you could be compensated for the birth defects that may have taken places, place in your child life. And this is where you could go. And also you could go here and you could learn how to apply for B, um, VA benefits. And this right here applies for both Vietnam veterans and for the Korean veterans. DAV, as I said, they're a congressional recognized organization. I did a video um, about applying for your benefits where you can go in the description. You can find how to apply, find um, VSOs, uh, veteran service organizations that are recognized congressionally to help you with your benefits so that you're not stuck in a situation where you don't know what to do, who to go to, how to get help, because there are a lot of false and fraud people out there that are doing things that aren't authorized by the VA to do. And you don't want to go to one of those places because you were on social media. You saw somebody list um, a bunch of things and say, hey, we help veterans. Don't do that to yourself. Stop, look and listen as we were taught as kids. And when you do that, you will listen to what Brother Vince saying. And you will look in the description, you'll find all this important information, you'll click on it, and then you will go and research through the site that I showed you on VA.gov to where you can find out who are VSOs, Veteran Recognized Organization. That's not what that acronym stands for, but you can find out who is recognized by the VSOs as a congressional organization that the VA has approved of, and they can help you. You can find a list of lawyers and all these people. Go to my video called VA Benefits, part one and part two. And then I actually recently did another video to help you basically go back to those videos. So the information is there. You just have to really just watch my videos to the end to find out this information. If you're just looking at it, skipping through it because you got bored and you didn't want to hear all of what I had to say, then you may be missing out on a lot of wealth because I give a wealth of information for those who need help. 
So as always, this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince for Vet Talk. My good people, Vet Talk out.